The key to accuracy in all lathe operations lies in the initial preparation of centering the work. If this is not done correctly, all other steps to align the work and the cutting tool will be useless. There are a variety of ways in which the work can be centered, but for our purposes, we'll use a center square and a scriber. Place the workpiece in a vise. Remove all burrs from the ends of the work with a file. Then apply layout dye or chalk to both ends. Place the center square firmly against the body of the work while keeping the rule flat on the end surface. With the scriber, draw a line along the edge of the rule, turn the square over and draw another line. This is to allow for any error caused by misalignment of the rule. If no error exists, both lines will coincide. If errors do exist, two parallel lines will be scribed. This action is repeated to draw another set of lines at right angles to the first. The junction of the two lines, or sets of lines, will be the centre of the workpiece. Place a punch at the intersection of the lines and strike it with a light hammer blow. This will mark the true centre of the work. Then drill a hole at the intersection so that the lathe centre will be able to support the workpiece. Make sure you carry out all these steps on both ends of the workpiece. The work is mounted on the lathe by placing it between the lathe centres and you'll have to fit the centres to the headstock and tailstock. To fit the centre to the headstock, you must place a protective wooden block on the lathe bed. Remove any accessory that is mounted on the lathe spindle. Clean the lathe spindle with a cloth and remove any lint. Start the motor and check the live centres for trueness. Then remove the lathe centre again. Clean the lathe centre points and the workpiece centre holes. After this preparation, a suitable drive plate can then be selected. Once again, make sure that the thread of the drive plate is clean. If using a thread type spindle or drive plate, apply a few drops of oil on the threads for lubrication. Position the drive plate on the spindle and tighten the cam nuts. Then select a lathe carrier and fasten it on one end of the workpiece. The bent tail of the carrier should be pointing outwards. Now move the tailstock to a position to suit the length of the workpiece and clamp the tailstock into position by tightening the tailstock lever or nut. By holding the workpiece in your left hand, place the centre of the work onto the headstock centre so that the tail of the carrier fits into the slot on the drive plates. Advance the tailstock spindle so that its centre meets the other centre of the workpiece. This should be done until the dead centre of the tailstock enters the hole in the end of the work and all end play is eliminated. Now turn the spindle handwheel back so that there's slight end play and the tail of the carrier can move back and forward in its slot. Lift the tail as it sits in the drive plate slot to the top of the slot. Then let the tail fall within the boundaries of the slot. If it falls under its own weight and there's no end play between the work and the lathe centres, then the spindle hand wheel has been adjusted correctly. In order to perform a lathe operation, you need a cutting tool. Cutting tools are made from a variety of substances such as carbon steel, non-ferrous alloys and so on. There are different tools for different operations and you can refer to a nomograph in order to determine which particular tool you'll need for the job at hand. Different operations and tools are referred to as a right hand or a left hand cut depending on the direction they must travel along the work to make the cut. To set up a right hand rough turning tool in the tool post, you must 
mount the tool holder on the left hand side of the tool post. Make sure that the set screw is close to the tool post. Set the tool holder at right angles to the tailstock or pointing slightly upwards. Mount the rough cut tool bit into the tool holder making sure it extends only 12 millimeters beyond the tool holder. Tighten the tool holder set screw. Check the height of the tool bit by running in the tailstock and cross slide until the point of the tool bit is as close as possible to the point of the tailstock lathe center. Then make any necessary adjustments. Once completed, securely tighten the tool post screws to prevent the tool holder from moving under the force of a cut. The feed is the distance that the cutting tool advances along the face of the work for each revolution of the spindle. And this can be measured as the thickness of the chips. A feed of 0.05 millimetres means that for each turn of the spindle, the cutting tool moves 0.05 millimetres along the work. Now the feed has an important relationship with the depth of the cut. To produce accurate work, as with a finishing cut, a fine feed is required with a small or light cut. On the other hand, with rough work, when you're trying to remove metal as quickly as possible and accuracy is not important, the cut and the depth can be coarse and deep. All lathe operations require cutting fluids which provide a cooling and lubricating action that protects the edge of the cutting tool. This allows the sharpness to be maintained and the cutting speeds to be increased by lowering the temperature. By referring to the cutting fluids chart you can determine which fluid is appropriate for the metal you'll be working with. When you have set up the lathe correctly, you're ready to make a cut after you have set the cutting tool to centre height and securely tightened the tool post screws. Mounted the workpiece between the centres. Greased the workpiece centre holes. Made sure the work area is adequately lit. Set the correct lathe speed for the material being cut. Set the quick change gearbox for the rough cut feed of half a millimetre and press the start button. Now you can start the lathe, release the clutch and make the cut. The purpose of the rough cut is to remove a sufficient amount of metal from the workpiece so that no faults are left on the outside of the bar and there's sufficient metal left to perform the desired finish cut. A finished cut requires a slightly higher cutting speed and a much finer depth and feed for it to be accurate. It's important at the end of each operation and at the end of the day's work to clean up your work area and to store tools and accessories in the appropriate place. This video program will have given you a basic understanding of the working of a sensor lathe, its various parts and the manner in which these parts are correctly adjusted. A good working knowledge of the lathe is necessary before you can attempt any work on this equipment. And you can study this information in more detail by reading these basic skills manuals. Always keep in mind that safety in the workshop is of equal importance to developing your skills on the lathe. Any knowledge and skill must be built on sound foundations. Once you feel that you have a good knowledge of the basic operation of the lathe, you may wish to try your hand at specific exercises. Again, 
This range of basic skills manuals devoted to the lathe can guide you through such exercises. If you encounter any difficulty in understanding the lathe and its various components, you should speak with your supervisor at work or talk with your trade teacher.